Hello everyone, I'm Ling Ling Huang and I am a PhD candidate in Department of Biostatistics at Harvard. It's a great honor for me to present my work with collaborators titled Combined Single Cell RNA and TCR Sequencing Reviews Migratory Phenotypes of Tissue Th17 Cells During Autoimmunity. I'd like to begin my presentation with a very brief introduction to autoimmunity. Autoimmunity is an immune response where the immune system attacks the organism's own healthy tissues because it mistakes the self-antigen as non-self. In humans, there are more than 80 known autoimmune diseases, such as multiple sclerosis, asthma, and type 1 diabetes. Autoimmunity can affect nearly every part of the body and leads to various results. Moreover, according to the NIH report in 2005, in the United States, there are over 24 million people that are affected by autoimmune diseases. Although the mechanism behind autoimmunity remains unclear, studies have shown that there is a cell type that plays a very important role in many of the autoimmune diseases, the Th17 cells. Th17 cells are a subset of CD4 T cells that are defined by their production of interleukin-17. They are primarily present in the gut during homeostasis. However, during disease, they can also be found in additional tissues across the body. And as I mentioned before, they play an important role in multiple autoimmune diseases. Uh, however, whether they are the inducers of tissue inflammation remains unclear. Therefore, we wanted to leverage combined single-cell RNA and the TCR sequencing to review the plasticity of Th17 cells across and within tissues, as well as their systemic immune response during autoimmunity. TCR sequencing is powerful because T-cell receptors can be used as a barcode to identify cells from the same clone. Naive T cells have a diverse but not expanded T cell repertoire. Uh, when the receptors bind to specific antigen, the cell will be activated and expand into a clone. And all the cells in the clone will have exactly the same T cell receptor. Therefore, we can determine if two cells were originated from a common ancestor by comparing their T cell receptor sequences. What questions can we ask when we have combined RNA and TCR sequencing data? Here are two examples. Firstly, in terms of systemic immunity, we can ask how the subpopulations across different tissues are connected with each other. And then secondly, in terms of T cell plasticity, we can ask what is the flexibility in the T cell's function within the tissue given its TCR. Now I'm going to show you how we explored into these two questions for Th17 cells at homeostasis and do, during EAE autoimmune disease. EAE is a mouse model for multiple sclerosis and upon EAE, Th17 cells can be found in the central nervous system in addition to the gut-related tissues. Uh, our questions for Firstly, what is the baseline heterogeneity of Th17 cells within and across tissues? Secondly, how does the baseline heterogeneity change upon EAE disease? And number three, upon EAE disease, where do the Th17 cells in the CNS come from? Due to time limitation, I'm going to focus on question number three, but our paper has been published, so if you're interested in the other two questions, you're very welcome to read our paper. Before we dive into the analysis, I'd like to acknowledge the supervisors and the co-first authors for this paper. This project was supervised by the amazing supervisors Dr. Vijay Kutru and Dr. Aviv Regev. And my academic advisor, Dr. Rafael Urizari, also provided a lot of help with the data analysis. 
The co-first authors Alex Chanel from the Cultural Lab and Dr. Meramit Singer, both of them are super kind and talented, and they are the best collaborators I could ever ask for. Now let's look into the data analysis. We collected Th17 cells from five tissues at homeostasis, including the spleen, colon, small intestine, pyrus patches, and the mesenteric lymph node. Just to remind ourselves of the anatomy, the pyrus patches are groups of lymphoid follicles in the mucous membrane in the small intestine. And the mesenteric lymph nodes are lymph nodes in the mesentery, which is a fold of membrane that attaches the intestine to the abdominal wall. In the EAE mice, we in addition collected samples from the draining lymph nodes and the central nervous system. We collected in a total of 80 samples and performed combined RNA and TCR sequencing for 40 of them. On the right, I'm showing you a U-map of the tissue origin for all cells during EAE disease. Interestingly, we find that the cells were mostly clustered by tissue origin rather than cell phenotypes, except for the proliferating cluster on the left and the Treg-like Th17 cluster on the right. In, this, in our paper, we discussed in detail how we generated t tissue signatures as well as the phenotype signatures, but I'm going to skip that and proceed to the TCR analysis. Okay, our question is, where do the Th17 cells in the CNS come from? To answer this question, we examine the clones that have at least 10 cells and are shared by at least two tissues. In this heat map, every row is a clone and the color indicates the relative frequency of cells in each, each tissue. We can see clearly that there are two tissue modules, one for the central nervous system draining lymph node and the spleen, and another one for the intestine associated tissues. To quantify the overlap of TCR between tissues, we defined T cell repertoire similarity score, the TRSS, which is basically the Batach area coefficient between the distributions of clones into tissues. We assumed that in each tissue, the number of cells in the clones follow a multinomial distribution, and the event probabilities are estimated as the proportion of cells belonging to every clone. The TRSS, we can see again, indicates that the CNS draining lymph node and spleen are closely connected, suggesting that the CNS cells might originate from the, CN, uh, the draining lymph node or the spleen. We also noticed that the spleen has some moderately high similarity with the gut modules. Uh, that is, um, the gut and the brain may be connected through two populations that coexist in the spleen during EAE disease. So let's zoom into the spleen cells during EAE. I'm showing you a U-map of the clusters we identified in the spleen. Particularly, we're interested in the two biggest populations, the blue one on the top and the red one at the bottom. We performed gene set enrichment analysis and we found that the blue cluster is enriched for signatures related to stem-like non-pathogenic th TH17 cells, and uh, the red one is enriched for pathogenic TH17 signatures. Next, to characterize the connection between the spleen and the CNS, we identify the cells that share common TCRs between the two tissues. On the right, I'm showing you a U-map where I highlighted the cells that share TCR with the CNS in pink and those don't share in green. And we can immediately notice that the pathogenic population seem to have a higher TCR overlap with the CNS. We also computed the TRSS for non-pathogenic and the pathogenic cluster with other tissues. 
pathogenic cluster seem to exclusively share TCRs with the CNS and the journey lymph node at a very high level, whereas the non-pathogenic cluster share with all tissues at a moderately high level. Therefore, we hypothesize that maybe the cells in the CNS are from um, are originated from the pathogenic cluster. To validate our hypothesis, we performed the cell transfer experiment. We induced EAE in TD tomato positive donor mice and sorted pathogenic and non-pathogenic cells from their spleens using cell surface markers. And then we separately we transfer them separately into the recipient mice who are TD tomato negative. From this experiment, we found that the non-pathogenic population can migrate to all seven tissues, whereas the pathogenic population only migrate to the CNS, journey lymph node, and the spleen exclusively. Our next question is how the two spleen subpopulations are connected with each other. Or in other words, which subpopulation has the plasticity to convert to the other? Therefore, we compared the clones in the two clusters, and we found that they share quite a few clones in common. Specifically, the non-pathogenic population spend a more diverse TCR raptor war with fewer expanded clones, which is possibly induced by the diverse agent at homeostasis. The pathogenic population, however, has a less diverse but more expanded repertoire. Therefore, we hypothesize that maybe the non-pathogenic population can be converted to the pathogenic population and become clonally expanded. To validate our hypothesis, we again performed the cell transfer experiment. When the non-pathogenic cells were transferred, the two bars on the left, we were able to recover both non-pathogenic and the pathogenic cells in the recipients based on the expression of their marker genes. The two bars on the right showed that when pathogenic cells were transferred, we were not able to recover non-pathogenic cells. Um, therefore, we think that non-pathogenic populations can be converted into the pathogenic population, but not vice versa. In summary, we used the combined single cell RNA and the TCR sequencing to identify two populations in the spleen upon EAE. The pathogenic population can migrate to the CNS and contribute to the autoimmunity there, while the non-pathogenic population circulates within the, uh, the intestine-associated tissues to maintain homeostasis. Also, the non-pathogenic population could give rise to the pathogenic population and replenish them during EAE. I'd like to end my presentation by thanking everyone who contributed to the project. I would love to thank again the PIs and the co-authors for their amazing contribution to this work and all the friends of the labs for the helpful comments, discussions, and suggestions. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.